Well, good morning. Welcome back to GP Outdoors. You may have remembered that scene. It was out of a video I did last winter. It was one of those many days last year when the snow was so sugary on the steep hill that I just could not get my B2601 up it. I had no tire chains. In fact, on that particular day, you might recall I had to call Guy <laughs> and he had to come down with his L-Series, throw a chain down the hill and he had to drag me up the hill so I could get over the top and continue snow blowing the rest of the driveway. A lot of good discussion ensued after that from a lot of subscribers suggesting to me it was time to get tire chains, if for nothing else, for safety. So I started to look into it. As is often the case on the channel, I get a lot of great advice and suggestions from you folks, and I really appreciate that. And in fact, once the chains discussion started to ensue online, I started writing down your ideas and I started categorizing them and capturing kind of some of the general themes of what types of chains would be best for this tractor. I took that kind of as my template or my blueprint. And over the summer, I spent a number of hours here and there when I had time going online, checking out places where I could buy chains, the types of chains they had, pricing and all those good things. I was kind of surprised that this day and age that there were so many websites out there that were not very consumer friendly, uh, probably more geared to commercial or industrial, you know, large users. Kind of confusing for somebody like myself that's never gotten chains before or looked into them. Found a couple there. Some people didn't have pricing. I had to make phone calls. And what really surprised me is that a lot of the companies didn't have chains that actually fit my tire size. And in fact, several of them told me that you basically buy a chain that's a little bit longer and you've got to somehow, you know, grind off links or revise it or amend the chain to try to fit your tire. So you look long and hard enough and I found a place. It's an online store called Canadian Chains, right here in Canada. There was a few things I liked about this company. One, when I went online, I really appreciated that their website is geared to a consumer like myself and not geared to somebody in an industrial or commercial use. Their chains are easily categorized by type of use. And sure enough, there's my small tractor. Click on small tractor and right in front of you, all the various different types of chain configurations they offer. And more importantly, unlike some other websites, the pricing is right there for you. One of the best things I liked about it was not only did they have it, not only was the pricing on the website, but it was one of the few places I found that had a whole ton of different tire sizes. And sure enough, they had my exact tire size. The online ordering was simple, easy, and I got it delivered a day earlier than expected. I was also pleased to see that there were a lot of positive reviews online on Google as well as on the internet, four and five star reviews in fact, talking about how good the quality of the chains were, the fact that they actually fit the tire like they were supposed to, and the speedy delivery when they were shipped. In addition to the chains I picked up for the rear tires, it was also easy to click a box and grab a pack of tighteners for both wheels. All easy. Simple ordering, and it arrived one day earlier than they promised. So far, so good. Based on all the good advice I got, I finally decided I was gonna go with an H pattern chain with V hooks. So that's what I purchased for the rear tires. Being my first time with chains, I didn't order any for the front. I ordered chains for the back only. I wanted to see how the traction and the safety was with just the back. And if I find out over the winter that it would be good to add chains to the front, then I'll order this front chains. I've never done this before, so a little disclaimer, you'll have to bear with me today as we put them on. But I did watch a few videos from some of our other friends' channels. I also had a discussion with Tractor Man 44 and with Joe Lesage, and I wanted to thank them for their extra advice. You may be wondering why I've chosen to put these chains on before the snow starts to fly. Wheel spacers. We're under the right side rear tire on the tractor, and as you can see, there's a whole lot of room, several inches of room, through the entire wheel well except when we get to this piece right here, it's almost like a flange. The steel is molded in and we end up with about no more than about one and five eighths space between the side of the tire and the edge of this piece of the fender. So several people have told me that I may or may not need wheel spacers to push the wheel back out. And I'm not gonna know that yet till I get them on. These chains weigh 60 pounds a piece. That's gonna add a little more weight for the winter too. Another benefit.
So I've laid out my first chain. I sprawled it out, made sure all of my links were the right way. Got my V-bars pointing up. I'm not sure if you can see it well on the video, but these are pretty thick, heavy duty chains. They're massive. I did not expect them to be this big. Now that we have the chains on, it says in the instructions on the website for Canadian chains that you always do the inside fastener first, then the outside, then you put your shackles in and you tie them in just below this big double chain here. If I'm doing it right, looks like we have a little bit of extra chain here hanging off. Got extra chain on this side too. There you have it. So I noticed on a couple of people's videos, they suggested that after you put it on and you get them clamped down, that you roll the tire back and forth a few times and just check for slack in a few spots. So I've tightened them up. I think I've got them on correctly. They look good. They're awfully heavy chains. I've noticed on both sides, I've probably got about two, four, six, about seven or eight links spare on the end. So maybe that's something that I can just take off instead of have them dangle. But the chains look really good. Let's throw the tightener on it. Those tighteners are definitely tight. So I got them on. So it turned out pretty good, I think. Really happy with the quality of these chains. They're big, thick, and I love that V-hook pattern. After I rolled the tire for a few feet, brought it back and forth, I noticed that I didn't center the chain very well on some parts of the tire. So you'll notice that somewhere you'll see these double links and they ride across the crest by the tread. And then in some spots, they come down a little further. So I'm gonna spend a little time, take this back off and just maybe undo the fasteners, reposition the chain and then tighten them back down again and then I'm gonna get the other side done. It also looks like I might be okay without wheel spacers because as I've driven it back and forth through the driveway, the only thing that's slapping the fender is this excess seven or eight links that's hanging off the end. And I have a feeling once I position it, the fastener and the hardware down here actually misses the underside of this lip of the fender. So I think I might be okay. Either way, my good neighbor guy suggested that once I was done with the chains that I drop it past his garage and we'll take a look at it. He said that we may not need the wheel spacers, even if it's slightly rubbing, because he might be able to work a little magic in underneath that fender. <clears throat> Got them both on. They're looking good. Learned a couple of things from doing the first tire when I did the second. So of course, like anything, it went much quicker and much simpler. As I mentioned, I got some uh, extra links here. So I think I'll probably take a grinder and maybe leave two or three links. And then I'll just take some wire and tie them up on the side. Got the bungees on, looks good on both sides and it's not really rubbing at all. I hear the odd rub underneath the fender, but uh, once I get these links off on both sides, we'll see if it's just the links dangling around as it's going under. You know, Overall though, so far, I'm pretty happy with the product and the surface from Canadian Chains. We'll see how they weather the winter. So thanks a lot for sticking around with me today. I hope you enjoyed it or you found it a little informative. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button, and if you wanna know when I'm posting videos, just click that little bell. Have a wonderful week with your families. I'll see you again on the next one. Cheers.